This was unprecedented, a leader of a foreign country addressing the U.S. Congress to criticize the foreign policy of their own president. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is here at the invitation of the opposition party and over the objections of U.S. President Barack Obama. My friends, I'm uh, deeply humbled. Here to talk about Iran and the ongoing the negotiations over its nuclear program. This deal has two major concessions. One, leaving Iran with a vast nuclear program. And two, lifting the restrictions on that program in about a decade. That's why this deal is so bad. It doesn't block Iran's path to the bomb. It paves Iran's path to the bomb. Claims the White House disputes, and the president also pushed back personally. Uh, the prime minister didn't offer any viable alternatives. Mr. Netanyahu invoked images of ISIL, North Korea, and the Holocaust, asking Congress to intervene to stop negotiating and increase sanctions until, in his words, Iran stops threatening to annihilate Israel. More than 50 members of Congress from the president's political party boycotted the speech in protest. I resented the condescending tone. What you were witnessing today was a very old concept. If you can make the people afraid, you can make them do anything. He is a rejectionist. There is no agreement that this administration could achieve with Iran that would be good enough for him. Despite the claims that this was not political or partisan, that is exactly how it's being seen in the U.S. A controversial speech that drew protests both for and against to the Capitol. Many political analysts say this visit was an attempt to give Netanyahu a boost as he heads into his own election. It clearly alienated some members of Congress that he hopes would intervene on his behalf. Still, it's not entirely clear Congress can do anything to stop a deal. The deal doesn't have to be done as a treaty, so it doesn't have to be given advice and consent by the Senate. The president could do this as an executive agreement. In the end, it could be that the prime minister got his speech, but the president will have the final say. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Washington.